Hello my friends, we are back in Luminar Neo and today we are talking about the Tone Curve. Tone Curve, you will find it into the Develop module and once you open it, this is the Tone Curve. As you can see, we have a diagonal line with two dots on each side. This dot on the left bottom, this is the very blacks in your image and the top right, that's the very white of your image. This gray little graph over here, this is your histogram. It would be good if you know how to read the histogram as this will help you with editing your image. To make a point into your line, you just click on it and it makes a point. If you drag it up, you brighten the image. If you take it down, you darken the image. And it's just that simple. If I lift the black that upwards, I'm fading the blacks. If I move the white point down, I'm fading the whites. I tone them down. Now, a lot of the times you will hear people saying like a faded cinematic look. What they mean by that is they fade the blacks a little bit, they fade the white a little bit, and then maybe you pull down the shadows just a little bit to give it a little bit more contrast, lift up the highlights over here. And now we have a cinematic fade. Another thing you will hear about tone curves, people is applying a slight S curve. What they mean by that is they will make, make a dot into the shadows, one in the midtones, one in the highlights. It means I will drag down the shadows just a little bit and brighten the highlights and we'll have this slight S curve and that will give us more contrast in the image. This is the before and after, before and after. I will reset this. Now, if I move this white point to the left, I'm infusing more white into the brightest side of my image. So more pixels will have more white in it. Similarly, if I move the bottom black point to the right, I'm infusing more blacks into the shadows. Now, how do we use this in real life? We also have the red, green, and blue channel. And this is where we can color correct, color grade, split tone, and I am going to show you that in real examples. Let's see. Let's take a, an example. And I am just going to start with this image. This is all stock images. I'll go to edit. I will go to develop. And let's say I want to apply more contrast. I will go to the white dot, which represents the luminance in my image. And now I can make a dot in the shadow, one in the highlights, one in the mid-tone. If I pull down the shadows, and up the highlights, now we have more contrast. That's before and after, before and after. I'm gonna reset that. Let's say I wanna make this a faded look. I would lift the blacks, pull down the shadows to give it more contrast, and I'll put the mid-tones highlights back to where they were. And now we have a faded cinematic look. This is the before and after, before and after. Let's do a different example. I am going to show you one of my favorite way of, well, I'll do this one first and then I'll show you one of my favorite ways of using the tone curves. I have a photo of a horse over here and as you can tell, it's very washed out. So it needs some contrast. First, let's apply more blacks in the black. So I'm gonna pull this down I'm gonna make a dot in the midtones, one in the highlights, and I am pulling down the shadows. And now that gives us a lot more contrast. Maybe even lift the highlights a little bit. This is the before and after. Before and after. And this was just making uh, use of the luminance into the tone. Let's work with colors a little bit. I'm going to choose maybe a portrait. I will work on this image. And let's see, how would I use, how would I edit this? Well, first I would like to go into the white dot, which is the luminance and bring it down so I can make it a little bit darker. It was a little bit too washed out. Then I am looking at the image and I would like to add some cyan and blues into the shadows and maybe some oranges into the highlights. How would I go about it? Well, I have three colors I can work with, red, green, and blue, but really, I have six colors because we know the opposites of RGB is C, M, Y. And if you ever get confused about that, you can go over here into the color harmony 
and into the color balance you will see the opposite of uh, red is cyan opposite of green is magenta opposite of blue is yellow so now that we know that we can go back into our develop into our curve tool and uh, we can go to reds and we want to add cyan into the shadows so i'll put a dot in the center for where my midtones are and one into the highlights because i don't want those to change and if i will increase the reds i will add red but if i decrease it i will add the opposite color which is cyan so you see now if i go before and after before and after i added cyan into the shadows i can do the same thing with the blues and i can add some blues this time i lift them so i, I can add blue so now this is our before and after let's see how we can add a little bit of orange to the skin tone and highlights well we can go to the blue and we know that the opposite of blue is yellow so if we drag down the blues we're adding yellow now red and yellow makes orange so that means we have to add a little bit of red to make the orange so i'll lift up the reds just a little bit not too much and now we have a color graded image the before and after before and after i am going to show you one of my favorites way of using the tone curve now and i'm going to use a landscape image this one i'm going to go to edit i'm going to go to develop and tone curve and this time i am going to i'm sorry that was my dog dropping a bone uh, this time i'm going to use the luminance and the colors and i will show you what i mean by this i'm just going to do it i am going to apply a slight s curve and the luminance the white dot and that just gives me more contrast now i will go to red and i will apply the exact curve curve tool the same curve the same s curve to the reds i'll do the same with the greens so the lines are just overlapping i'm doing the same thing into the luminance channel and all the color channels and by doing that now when i go to before and after this is my before this is my after before and after by doing that i applied a lot of contrast but not just luminous contrast i have color contrast i'm going to show you the before and after now for my taste maybe this is a little bit too much if i would work in photoshop i would probably decrease the opacity of the layer but here we cannot decrease the opacity what we can do instead is go to the mask and we can either paint or erase let's say i want to uh, only apply this effect 50% then I can use the paint or the erase at 50% and paint it over if I want it at 70% then I'll probably paint 70% or erase 30 if that makes sense so now I am painting this effect at 50% and this is our before and after before and after I am going to show you maybe let's do a different example a different way of editing the curve tool i'm going to use this image and this time i will brighten the midtones oops i'm sorry i'm on the blue channel i have to go into the luminance channel i'll brighten the midtones but this time i will take down the shadows and down the highlights and this kind of curve always seems to give a very pleasing more natural effect so this is our before and after before and after Let's do one more example. Let's do, hmm, what do we want to work with? I will work with, let's do this one. And then after I will show you this, I will show you a cool way to find dust spots on your image using curves. For this one, I am going to maybe lift the shadows up a little bit. I'm gonna lower the highlights. I'm gonna put a dot in the middle and then I'm gonna do a slight S curve. And I will do the same exact thing with all the color channels. Following the same curve on every color, doing the fade into darks, a little bit in the light. And now let's see. This is our before and after, before and after. And if this is too much, 
and you don't want to go take the brush and reduce it what you can do you can go to the color tool over here and just take the saturation down a little bit and that will tone it down and now we have this color graded a little bit of a faded effect What else can we do with the curve tool? Let's see. I'm going to show you how to find dust spots. So on this image, uh, if you look at it, you can't really see any dust spots. Well, the way to find them, you can use the curves tool and you go into the luminance and what you do, you drag up and then you drag down all the way and you get this kind of like infrared look. But this will allow you to see the dust spots and I have one right here. Let me zoom in into 100%. You can see this is the dust spot over here, which before, without applying the curve tool, you just cannot see it. All right, what else can we learn about curve tool? Let me take a different example. How about, let's do this one. There's a few things that you have to be aware and make sure you don't do, and that is get flat lines. What do I mean by flat lines? Well, I showed you that if I move the blacks halfway and take the whites halfway, you will get a complete gray image. You lose all the information. It's not updating for some reason. Come on, Luminar, work with me. Work with me, work with me. There you go. So you get gray you're losing all information. So what you don't want to do when you apply your curves, you don't want to like create something like this. And then you have this flat line over here, which will just give you that plain 50% gray in your image and it destroys your image. You always wanted to have some curves to it. What else can we do? Let, oh, I'm giving you a different example. I have one. Maybe, two, 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 two. let's see. I need something that doesn't have a lot of contrast. This one doesn't have a lot of contrast. So if I look at the histogram on this image, you will see that I don't really have whites. This is the histogram. And the blacks only starts really about here. So I don't have complete whites or very bright in my image and I don't have very blacks. One quick way to, do, um, to apply more contrast is to bring your slider to where the whites are starting and then bring your slider from the blacks where the blacks are starting. And now we just have more contrast from before to after. Of course, it's too much. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. Before, that's why you need to know how to read your histogram because it will help you onto your editing. I am going to give you one more example and that is, let's see, I'm just going to edit this image and this image, I like it the way it is, but let's see what can we do to it. Well, first I would like to add a little bit more contrast. So I'll go to my white dot and just make the slightest little S curve. And I'm still waiting for Neo to update. And that is before and after, before and after. And then the skin tones looks a little bit yellow. Maybe I wanna add just a little bit of red. So I'm just gonna the tiniest little amount of red, not too much. So like that. And now this is our before and after, before and after. It is a little bit too much, I will tone it down. So let's see, I'll take my eraser and I will erase just a little bit of it, not the whole thing. And let's see. I lost my mask. There you go. And that is our image before and after. Before and after. I hope the curve tool makes a lot more sense to you now and you'll be able to use it in your further editing. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you next time.